Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For our viewers at home and those who are watching by way of television, this is the platform Abuja. And our next speaker is someone who I believe at this point I should say you should put your seat belts on because we have a very, very interesting speaker who's about to take on the podium. She is the chairman, board of directors, First Bank of Nigeria, um, and premier of the most valuable banking brand. She's also the founder and chief executive officer of the Chair Center Group. The companies within the group include the Chair Center Limited, Socoa Chair Center Limited, Furniture Man Manufacturers Mart, TCC Security Systems, and Cubes and Boxes Limited. These companies are involved in manufacturing, retail, and bankway security system services. She chairs a number of corporate and not-for-profit boards, amongst which are the House of Tower International and After School Graduate Development Center, a facility which she promoted to help address youth employability and enterprise issues in Nigeria. She sits on the boards of Digital Jail Limited, Cadbury Nigeria PLC, Convention on Business Integrity, CBI, and the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. She was chairman FBN Life Assurance Limited, FBN Capital Limited, and Kakawa Discount House Limited. With high interest in social issues, including women, she's a co-founder and past chairperson of Women in Business Management and Public Service, the WIMBs, an ordained pastor and founder of the Christian Missionary Fund. Through this faith-based organization works with hundreds of missionaries spread across Nigeria to change lives with the provision of medical education and other supplies. She's a multiple award-winning entrepreneur and the first Nigerian recipient of the prestigious International Women Entrepreneurial Challenge Award as a nominee of the U.S. Department of State in 2008. She's married to Abiodo Awoshike and they are blessed with three wonderful sons. Ladies and gentlemen, not new to the platform, please join me and welcome Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika. Please give her a resounding round of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A big thank you to Pastor Kwaju, his beautiful wife, Tui, and the whole of the Covenant Church family and to every Nigerian who ceaselessly is consumed with Project Nigeria. I feel like all I have to do is just um, continue from where Obi stopped. Because really, Nigeria is work in progress. And our issues and our discourse never end, at least not for a while. My assignment here this morning is on entrepreneurship, small and medium scale businesses as the vehicle for economic growth. Her last submission is simply that when you look at everything else that hasn't worked, we need to come back to our people. And when you understand anything about Nigerians, studied by different international organizations and a lot of conclusions concerning Nigeria, one thing is clear. Everybody agrees that we have a natural abundance of entrepreneurial energy. And when we're talking about small and medium scale businesses, our people for generations for decades and for years that you cannot count, I've been engaged in enterprise at every type of level as a means of interaction in our community and a way of economic activity for our people to survive. So this is a terrain that the illiterate, the semi-illiterate, the educated and the super-educated has been involved in one way or the other. Now, when you have the kind of population that we have, and you have an agreement that there is a natural nook 
for a child to gather something together and pretend to be doing business as child play, then you know that in an environment where you need to create value, aggregating that natural talent by facilitating an environment that allows true expression that creates value for our country can only be good for us at whatever level because at the end of the day every simple economic activity from the tiniest to the largest has a value that sinks into the national economy whether from the petty trader on the roadside who will use the resource gained from that activity and move to another part of the economic activity by paying for transportation, by paying for food, by buying clothes, by buying school books for children, by doing whatever it is that they find to do, by buying medication in the pharmacy, whether it's the crude or the international pharmacy, by plugging right back into the value chain of our economy. Every single one of us has a chance and a possibility to create value for the overall economy of our country as is defined. Unfortunately, there are real gaps because somehow we think that entrepreneurship is a by activity. It's an aside that just happens. Some people are called entrepreneurs. Some people are traders or they're doing business one way or the other. We have such a massive informal sector because we haven't quite recognized the strength and the power that they represent. And we continue to act like they will sort themselves out without any deliberate, holistic decision as to how to tie the ends of the activities together in order to gather the value for the nation. More than at any other time. This is the time where we do not even have a choice. It is not about where the option, it's not about having so many options. Because the issue is where are the options? Whether you like it or not, oil is of the past. It will have a role for a while, but it's on a declining mode. Every day, billions of dollars are being pumped to find solutions to create alternatives to the use of oil. And we want to sit and plan and live on the oil. We haven't even done a good job of it anyway, so it's about time to pack it aside. And think of the things that we are most likely to do better. And what also makes it critical and important for us to urgently attend to these issues with an holistic plan and a sincere approach before we even destroy the motivation of our people. Because a lot of people are discouraged right now. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a manufacturing and I can tell you I'm tired. I am absolutely exhausted. And I am a passionate, committed Nigerian. I love my country. I want to keep my factories running. I want to build more facilities, more factories, more operations, more businesses that will create jobs for more people. I convince myself not to say, maybe it's time to sell out the businesses, put the money in the bank, and I can live well for the rest of my life. I convince myself every day, you can't do that. Because when I look at the faces of the hundreds that work for me, and the many people who are tied to the economics of my business, I remind myself it's not about me. And for that reason, you continue with the pain of what can be made easy. You ask yourself every time, does it have to be so hard to do the right thing or to try to create value in your country? Listen, reality tells us right now
any nation that you know in the world has got critical employment issues. Every single nation and countries are throwing everything that they have at solving the problem. We have a population that is even more dangerous because we have such a large youthful population. When you have a lot of young dynamic minds who are craving to do something to create value, those that you have promised hope, you have given them hopes for the future of things they can be once they can just get through the almighty educational system. And then they come to the end of a chain and there's only a wall in front of them. There are no doors or windows on that wall. What grammar or English or Yoruba or Aousa do you want to speak to those kind of people? Companies are getting more efficient and under pressure, companies are seeking to maximize themselves and naturally are shedding weight.